Hello, welcome this week's edition to the MMA Freak Fire of the Week. I'm Matt Solver. So, um, this last weekend, um, we had uh, UFC Fight Night 131, aka UFC Fight Night Moraes versus Rivera. And um, so, I'm going to give the Fighter of the Week to the winner of said main event, Marlon Moraes versus Jimmy Rivera. Uh, that fight was short, and, um, you know, Jimmy Rivera just, or Marlon Moraes just finished Jimmy Rivera's 20-fight winning streak. That's not an easy thing to accomplish in MMA. So, yeah, it, w it was it was quick. It, w it was quick. Moraes went out there and earned the uh, TKO. He's arguably, um, if he doesn't get the next title shot, he's definitely a Close. He he's definitely close there. Uh, um. Then the next fight was Gregor Gillespie versus uh, Vink uh, Pichel. That was a TKO victory. Then Walt Harris. You know, a lot of these guys just are not know Walt Harris TKOs. Uh, Daniel Spitz. I mean, they were good fights. They were good. They were good fights, but they were on a fight night. Um. Ben Saunders TKOing Jake Ellenberger. Jake Ellenberger, I would argue, was in the top five at one point. Um, ben Saunders has been around for a while. He was, I think, on season seven of The Ultimate Fighter. And bounced around a little bit. I think he went to Bellator at one point. He's been one of those fighters who kind of waffled around between promotions and ended up back in the UFC. And... Um, then uh, Julio... Or uh, Julio... Ars versus uh, some Daniel Tamer, whose brother David Tamer won earlier in the night. Sam Alvey uh, fought to a decision against Zion Volante. Um, Sam Alvey last fought against Rashad Evans. Sam Alvey's been around for a while. He's one of the um, current members of Team Quest, and he's been around for a while. And. Um, Gian Vellante is no joke, so to see him pull that off, I don't know exactly where this leaves Gian Vellante. But anyways, um, then Sajar Eubanks, who, um, even though she made a uh, argument that um, she actually revamped some things in order to actually be able to make weight uh, healthily, so good for her, um, won the decision against Lauren Murphy. I don't know where, to, uh, let's see, uh, Lauren Murphy one against Barb Honchak, so that that's um this fight in and of itself doesn't put her out of uh, or doesn't really beg um doesn't really make things bad for her. Um it's just a setback. So Jar Eubanks made an argument that she should get the first title shot. But I would argue that Valentina Shevchenko should get the first title shot against uh, Nico Montano once she gets out of her uh, injury. Just because of the fact that, well, it's it's uh, Valentina Shevchenko. She just came off of a bantamweight. Uh, well, actually, no. She did, she did make her uh, debut, but she, she just came off of bantamweight. She's miles ahead of anyone else in the division. I mean, it's it's... I would argue it's not even close. I don't think she's just another. She's just a completely different fighter compared to everyone else at flyweight in the UFC. So I, you know, Sarge Sarge in charge, as she goes on Twitter, could maybe make the argument, but I would argue that um, you know she 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 had her shot and she didn't make weight. So, th there's other people in line. I think Valentina should get the next title shot. Valentina's just miles ahead of everyone else in the game. Head to head, I would argue Valentina beats anybody in the in the division. To be perfectly honest, she was just fighting up in weight, and here she is in more of an ideal weight class for her, where she's not dealing with someone extremely large like Amanda Nunez. Um. Then, as I said, David Tamer uh, made a decision against Nick Lentz. These guys have been waffling around in the lightweight division for I, for years. Um, they've been around for a while. So, um, 
I'm not sure where this puts... Let's see. It definitely did bodes well for Tamer. I don't know how it bodes for Nick Lentz. I don't even... Um, I think at most he was ranked in the lower top 10 Nick Lentz was. David Tamer was never really ranked highly. Maybe top 15. Maybe. Um... So, yeah, that was, well, that was all the fights I watched for uh, UFC Fight Night 131. And then coming up this weekend, uh, coming up this week just in general, you've got um, Professional Fighters League relaunching uh, Professional Fighters League 1 when they redo their um, their whole, their, their whole um, new format where they're trying, they're doing... Something similar to what professional sports leagues in general do where they have a season and are hoping to make that a regular thing as compared to Bellator who would do more of like a television seasonal format, the old Bellator. Um, so th that that fight's hap that's happening um, this first. And something else I really don't understand. I can understand like with some fighters not wanting to keep them down. But they let go most of their champions. John Fitch went to Bellator. Um, Blagoy Ivanov is going to the UFC. Um, their flyweight guy went to the UFC. Of course, we know uh, Justin Gaethje. He went to the UFC. It's like th most of their guys went to the UFC. David Branch went to the UFC. Andre Arlovsky, Anthony Johnson. Now, granted, Arlovsky and Johnson were not champions at the time, but it's an... Uh, Oh, yeah, Jessica Aguilar. Oh, they let all their guys go. Oh, Yoshino Kami, too. And it was understandable when they let Mus Rusmar Paul Harris go. The guy just has issues. But to see these many guys um, take off like that, they I would argue that at one point, back when their World Series of Fighting... They had probably you could one could argue they may have had num the number two uh, promotion just on talent alone, just because of all those guys who would come out. I think Jane Shields is still in the promotion, but because of like the sheer amount of talent these guys had was almost comparable to like the middle UFC division. The some of the guys were ranked pretty highly that went over there. Um, the middle UFC division, the um, you know, definitely Bellator, um, th they had just so much talent. And all these guys just left. Like, I, like I, A, I don't understand why you wouldn't have... Uh, like, Bellator has at times let go of their champions. They let Michael Johnson go. They let Eddie Alvarez go. They've, they've, they've let guys go. But... Um, which, which which was a, but they voluntarily let these guys go. These were not guys who had finished out their contracts. And one th thing also to remember, the UFC when they drop their contracts, they have champions clauses in every single contract. That means if you're champion and your contract comes up, you've got one a one fight extension cuz you got to finish out that that champions clause. Most in the majority of cases most fighters just sign a new contract, and that takes care of that whole situation. But it's just one of those things where um, I, I wouldn't understand. I, I can understand because originally I don't think they were necessarily looking to compete big time with the UFC. They were definitely looking, though, to make an impact, and they did in a very big manner. But um, to not have your champions like champions clauses or something like that on your contract. That's that's um it's cuz like I said, Bellator voluntarily let their champions go. They didn't they those guys did not finish out their contracts and then have free agency and leave. Those guys finished those guys finished out their contracts and UFC and Bellator just decided to let those guys go. A lot of those those um happened under Bjorn Remney who I would argue in some ways didn't make the best business decisions in the long term, especially when you consider that a lot of the champions they let go, most of them end up going to the UFC. 
like you know, Michael Jensen went to UFC. Eddie Alvarez went to the UFC. Uh, Alvarez was a Scott Coker thing. He could tell that he wasn't happy. I think Michael Johnson was too. But either way, um, but yeah, to just see all of this happen to me is just it's just baffling. Because like I said, World Series of Fighting now the Professional Fighters League at one point was arguably the num you could almost argue the number two promotion in the world. But they're not there anymore because they just kept letting the, their, their champions, letting their champions go. To me, this just doesn't make sense. And, um, you know, they still have a good roster. I've looked at their roster with, with uh, the what they've done. They're still a good roster, but it's nowhere near what it was. It just it just is not what it was. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how Professional Fighters League moves on from here and it'll also be interesting considering the fact that um well one other thing that should probably be looked at in the future i know i'm just ranting um one other thing to look at in the future is to see maybe if fox is going to look to fill that void left by um because i don't think they have all of them because you know that when um they've they've Signed SmackDown, WWE SmackDown, but I don't know. There's um, rumors though that that's gonna they they um, they nixed it all of a sudden. But either way, that's that's not um, WWE. It's WWE's not gonna be exclusive to Fox, and I don't think it's with Fox Sports. It's just with regular Fox. So to see where they're going with this is just. Fox is definitely going to be in the market for a new, um, you'd expect, unless they're just going to find other sports to fill in all the, that void. Because, you know, Fox has a big chunk of their programming filled by the UFC. And at the end of this year, at, at, at 20, in 2019, that all disappears when UFC goes to ESPN. Now, here's a really big question. Where is um, the UFC going? No, wh what is Fox going to do with all that time? Are they going to maybe look at getting another promotion under their belt? It's going to be interest very interesting to see. And ironically enough, this is also the second time that the UFC has gone with Fox and is leaving Fox. In case you don't know, there was this thing uh, back... I think it was UFC 37.5 was a little bit of an experiment. Um, there's been a lot of different... Before it was Fox Sports, like Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2, there was Fox Sports Net, which is the regional Fox. And um, those were all... Those those had a variety of pro, uh, actual uh, fights. Those actually had a variety of promotions. They at one point did replays of Pride. They at one... They did, like I said, they ran UFC. They at one point had Bellator, early Bellator. So to see where they go from here is going to be very interesting. Are they going to try to pick another promotion, which um, UFC is going to be on ESPN. Um, Viacom has Bellator, so I don't think they're going to want to do want to do business with, with um, there. And World Series of Fighting is on NBC, uh, or Professional Fighters League is on NBCSN. So I don't know if they're going to want to go with anything in terms of those categories. So would they look at maybe getting another promotion? I have seen rumors upon rumors upon rumors upon rumors of the uh, of XFC, Extreme Fighters League, possibly get, coming out of their – because they've been dormant for a few years. Though so how you couldn't bring them out of that? So what happened was – with uh, XFC, they were they were an indie pro, uh, promotion, mainly operating out of Florida, but they actually did some pretty good records, and they actually have a, an attendance record in Florida that hasn't been beat by the UFC. They hold that record, not the UFC. In fact, in, in another number of different states, for the longest time, they were this, this indie MMA promotion that was accomplishing a lot. Then they got bought out by a Brazilian pro, uh, company and basically went down to Brazil and started doing business there for the longest time. Then they went dormant 
And it was unfortunate because around that time, I actually um, was reading about the possibility that they were actually going to be on HBO. HBO had never been, you know, um, premium sports channels had dropped MMA ever since Strike Force uh, discontinued. Showtime didn't want to do it anymore. That was that you know that was that. They, Showtime had done Elite XC. They'd done Strike Force. When Strike Force was done, they kind of just you know they just they just they just dropped it, and they've been perfectly happy with boxing ever since. But something I would really like to know. Well, like I said, I was reading at times that eight that XFC was looking to go on HBO. Um, that never happened. Then late last year, late last year, there was a Facebook post saying that XFC was going to go onto CBS Sports. We haven't seen that since then. Six months into 2018. So I don't know. Are they still going to be on CBS Sports? At one point, CBS Sports got Titan FC, but then Titan FC signed with UFC Fight Pass. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if uh, UFC... Fight Pass is going to have too much considering there's just a lot of confusion right now with the ESPN deal and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if promotions are going to want to stay necessarily stay on Fight Pass anymore. Um, uh, it just depends on how exactly things are going to go there. Maybe Invicta is going to look at finally picking that up, though. The... the it, exclusivity of the women's promo of women just just being women only that might handicap things i don't know there's a number of different promotions that could possibly pick that up um there's a few pro um like ces and then legacy fighting alliance they're both on access i don't know if they're going to want to rock that boat um so it's going to be very interesting to see if Fox is going to make an earnest effort to maybe fill that void. The only promotion I can really think of that would maybe want to fill that void would maybe be Invicta Fighting Championships. But on the other hand, one other promotion I can maybe think of that has not ventured into the U.S. market, and I don't know if they'd want to do this, maybe one championship? I think they're perfectly happy in Asia. They just have that market summed up to the point that the UFC... Basically, when it came to one uh, championship and the UFC, I think they waited too late to get into that market because they were looking at maybe getting to the Philippines. They've done some stuff in some of the Chinese markets, but they missed the boat. They were looking to maybe expand into that, and then what happened? Victor Kui... Um, creates one FC and just is rocking the Southeast Asian market. Got all these sponsors in there. They're just holding promotions in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, mainland China. They went as far as the Far East. I think they ha held one event in uh, United Arab Emirates. It's like they're just rocking it out there. And to see something like... Um, so, but here's the thing. They haven't really had a whole lot of exposure in the North American market. Now, they're doing financially pretty well, but, you know, maybe they might want to consider that. This might be an opportunity. Um, it, it, you know, it really depends. Maybe Fox Sports might want to just uh, do what um, the, what Showtime did and then just drop showing MMA completely, but I'm not exactly sure they want to do that, considering they've made that a big part of their programming. It's kind of like how, why Spike picked up Bellator is because they, it became a big part of their programming. They came, became synonymous with that. And then also NBCSN used to be Versus. Versus had WEC for the longest amount of time. So and you know it, it hasn't worked out with some promotions, but I sh but Fox Sports historically for the longest time had MMA promotions. They had you know you, I mean you look at it UFC at one point IFL Pride Bellator they've historically had MMA promotions on there for a very long time. So for this to happen was not necessarily a surprise. Um. Now, whether, as I said, 
it's ultimately up to them, but it is definitely interesting to see where things go from there. It's kind of funny how I went on this rant just from the fact that I was talking about uh, Professional Fighters League 1. Um, so yeah, Professional Fighters League 1 tomorrow on uh, NBCSN Legacy F's uh, Fighting Alliance 42 is on Access TV on Friday, and then Saturday is UFC 225. It is going to be very interesting, and it might be a little challenging for me to come up with a Fighter of the Week for next week. So... Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, also, I'm going to be, it, it is Wednesday. I will be watching UFC The Ultimate Fire tonight. Probably post that review tomorrow. So yeah, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Um, be sure to um, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the at uh, to MMA Freak this YouTube. Also, at MMA Freak Out is our Twitter. At Matthew Salzer is my personal Twitter. Also, I also have. Other stuff going on in uh, on YouTube. I have a personal channel. Matthew Salzer is just my personal YouTube channel. So that's that. MMA-freak.com for exclusive content. That's the website. And yeah, that's it. See you next time.